So if you're using OBS, you should be using Docs. And if you've used the Twitch login feature of OBS, you may have an idea of what Docs look like. But today we're gonna do a deeper dive into how you could utilize Docs to make the most out of your OBS and you won't even have to use your stream manager. Hey, what's up everybody? Dimitri of Cadet Gaming here. And today we're gonna go over how to utilize Docs to their best potential, including using custom browser Docs to bring anything from any website that you utilize while you're streaming, you can bring it right into OBS so that you don't have to have a browser source open and you can have everything open in one nice controlled area. If you end up finding anything in this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing, it really helps me out. We're closing in on that thousand subscriber mark and I'm really looking forward to it. Hope to surprise you guys with some stuff after we hit that. And uh, yeah, let's hop right into the video. So first things first, this is what my OBS looks like. Uh, let's go ahead and move my camera. We'll uh, slap it right in the middle here. Yeah, that's fine. So this is what my OBS looks like while I'm streaming. Uh, lately, I've been playing around a lot more with docs. I actually went back to trying Stream Elements Live, which is like an add-on uh, for OBS um, for a few reasons, and I'll go over those in a second. But this is a general idea of what my OBS looks like while I'm streaming. So over on the left here, we have some of the quick actions. I only have the ones here that I feel like I need to use while I'm streaming. I don't run ads, I don't do any of those kinds of things, so I don't really have those here. Most important things for me is marking something to be clipped later, uh, managing polls, throwing a gift chests, rating a channel I don't particularly need, which is why it's kind of far down below. I could do that with a chat command. Um, I have a little host list here as well. Uh, it's always nice to know who's hosting you because sometimes if someone auto hosts you, um, you don't really get a notification. So it's just kind of nice for me to keep an eye on that. Down here in the left, I actually have two docs on top of each other. So I have the stream elements um, activity feed. So this allows me to see things like people redeeming things from my store, my stream elements store, which the regular uh, feed won't show. Uh, it also allows me to skip alerts if you know there's some kind of a uh, terrible message and a donation that somehow got through the filters. I can easily skip things. Um, and I do like how it marks um, new alerts versus old alerts. So I can make sure that I don't miss any shout outs for someone who subscribed or what have you. But behind it, I have predictions. So don't run predictions very often. Uh, I'm going to try to do it more often because they're really fun. Um, but this is a really easy way for me to start predictions and get them going. Here I have the standard Twitch activity feed. Um, you know, this is what you would normally find on your stream manager. And then behind it, I have the rewards. So I do a lot of curls and squats during my streams because people go ahead and redeem their channel points for those. So this is an easy way for me to keep track of how many I have to do. Um, and clear them off the list because I try to be on top of this and clear it off when I can. We have the audio mixer here. We have my scenes and sources here. I also, behind the sources, I have the scene transitions. Um, so I can easily uh, change the transition if I want to. Now, I'm typically streaming in studio mode like this. So I do have my most used transitions here in the middle. Um, so I don't typically use this one, but I have it here just in case I need to get to it quickly, but that's why it's in behind. Here is the new stream health um, little widget from the stream manager. It's really nice for people like me who have had terrible internet and I wanna be able to keep an eye on when it's dipping, um, if something's happening. Luckily, knock on wood, my internet's been pretty good lately, but in the past, it has been super inconsistent, and this just gives me a little bit of peace of mind. Uh, I have my Twitch stats here, so this is just you know how many people are are um, watching, how long I've been going, how many clips, and you know a little pieces of information. Here I have the stream information, so I am like 
I'm probably like the worst streamer because I switch games in a stream multiple times depending on whatever people want to play. So I'm updating this a lot. So I like having this here. It's really easy for me to get to and I can quickly change uh, my game and my title whenever I need to. And then right on the right hand side here is my chat. Now I have my chat on the right hand side because my gaming monitor is here. So the chat is like right beside it. So as soon as somebody messages, I can usually see the chat move and I can easily reply to whoever's uh, messaging me. Cause one thing that is really hard, especially for newer streamers is just focusing or paying attention to your chat so that people who are asking questions or trying to say hi, don't go unanswered for a really long time. Um, once you stream more, you get more used to it and you get a lot better at engaging with your chat and noticing when someone's there. Um, but it is one thing that I definitely notice with newer streamers. All right, and here is the stream manager. So this is the way I've got my stream manager set up on my gaming computers browser. Every browser that you have your stream manager on, it will keep its own layout. So if you set it all up nicely on your main computer and then you want to pull it up on your laptop, it's going to be an entirely different setup. So you got to make sure that you set it up on whatever device you're going to be using it on. Now, they're always adding really great and new panels into the stream manager that are super helpful. And I really didn't like having the stream manager open one because Chrome eats all of my RAM, uh, it's a pain in the butt. And I just don't really like ha needing to have another window open if I don't have to. So what I ended up doing is moving these, as you've noticed, into OBS as a dock. And we'll go over this really quickly. It's super easy, um, but I highly suggest that if you're not a big fan of using the browser, or if you've only got one monitor, using the docs is a really easy way to move anything. You can move any one of these panels into your OBS and it is awesome. All right, so we've got our demo OBS here. And if you go up to view and you go to docs, you can see a whole bunch of the standard docs that are built right into OBS. Things like your scenes, your sources, your controls, your audio mixer, and your stats. Um, I like having the stats up top. It puts the information in an area that's not too cluttered. I can easily see it. This is where I like to watch my drop frames again to keep an eye on my internet. Also the frames missed due to lag. So I can tell if my CPU is being overloaded by usually something else in the background, not OBS itself, because I've spent a lot of time making sure that OBS runs at a really good and efficient way on my streaming computer. But those are the standard docs. And if you go here, you can notice that you can bring in custom browser docs. So anytime you're on your stream manager uh, and you go ahead and close the edit, once you click one of these three dots, you can do a pop out. And when you get a pop out, you get a link to this and you can copy that link, go into OBS, go to view, go to docs, custom browser docs. And I've already added the request queue, but let's go and add, this one was the stream health. So we add that in. Now we click apply. It's going to pop that open. It's going to make me log into Twitch. Now, if it doesn't make you log into Twitch, it's going to tell you that you don't have permission to access this. So for example, I think with my re request queue, it's going to tell me access denied. If you have access denied, you have to log into Twitch to be able to access those. So luckily, uh, with some things, it'll actually specifically ask you to log into Twitch. But if not, if you don't get this window, when you're trying to add one of your docs, go ahead to docs, go to custom browser docs, and just call this one login and just do twitch.tv and apply, and then log into your Twitch this way. And this will log OBS. 
uh, the OBS docs specifically into Twitch so that you can go ahead and use anything that you would use logged into Twitch. So make sure that when you're logging in, you check the remember this computer for 30 days or else you're gonna, especially if you have two-factor authentication, which you should, because um, you don't wanna have to re-log in every time you, you launch OBS. This makes it really easy. Go ahead, throw your token in. And then once you're logged in here, if I go ahead and relaunch the request queue, we're good to go. So let me go ahead and add a bunch of other ones here. So let's go ahead and add a new doc. And you can add a bunch of them at the same time. This is, the, is an old link. So let's actually add the updated request queue. Pop out. Update that one. Let's go and add my predictions. We'll just do these ones for now. And apply. So now with docs, they will be pop out by default, but when you bring it somewhere, uh, you have to close this. When you bring it somewhere, it'll allow you to pin it somewhere on OBS. So you can put this wherever you feel uh, makes the most sense for you. So let's go ahead and put this one right here. And let's go ahead and grab one of my other docs. Let's grab the stream health. Let's toss that one on this side. And let's grab the request queue. And let's put that right, let's put that on top of sources. Why not? All right, so now when you put something on top, you get a little tab, really easy. But this way you can have access to everything within OBS you don't have to have a browser open. Everything is quick, centralized. This is honestly has changed the way I've had my monitor set up. Uh, my left monitor is just OBS now. My right monitor, I've got my Chatterino. I have my music player, whether it's uh, Pretzel Rocks or Spotify, then I have my Discord. So this has been the best layout for me. And the nice thing is it's so customizable, you can change it to be whatever is best for you. So you can put as much on there as you want, as little on there as you want. Obviously the higher resolution your monitor, the more stuff you'll be able to cram in there without it looking too, too packed and making things too small. But this is a really good way to get a bunch of stuff on your OBS. You don't have a lot of empty space anymore. I don't like having empty space. I like being able to use all the space, especially on a monitor while I'm trying to be productive. And this has really made a big difference on me utilizing things. I'm gonna to try to use predictions more because it's more accessible to me. Try to use the clip that feature a little bit more and make some more clips after you know going back and reviewing all my stuff, I'll have a marker where I can go and clip something. Um, being able to monitor my stream health and stuff. It's stuff that I personally value. And if there's anything there that you guys want, you can go ahead and add it. So remember when you're on your stream manager, if there's stuff missing, you just click this little crayon, the pencil up here, grab any of the panels you want, move it on there, close it up, three dots, pop out, and you're good to go. And the nice thing about these docs is that you can use them to access anything that you can get to with a browser. So you can use it to log into your Spotify and have your Spotify right in OBS if you wanted. You have endless possibilities with these. As long as you can access it from a browser, you can throw it into a doc. If you use docs for anything other than what I mentioned today, leave a comment in the section below and let me know what kind of things you guys use it for. I'm always interested in learning new things and finding out the way that other people use the stuff that I use, but in an entirely different way. Also, if you have any questions on how to implement something that you want to use, but it's not quite working for you, leave a question in the comment section below and I will try my best to help you out. I really enjoy helping you guys achieve the things that you're trying to aim for. So yeah, leave lots of questions, lots of feedback, all of it in the comment section. I really appreciate it. I hope you found this video about docs helpful. 
If you did, I'd appreciate it if you liked and subscribed. It really helps me out. Hit that bell icon if you want to be notified of future videos where I do more kind of walkthrough videos like this. Whether it's streaming related, computer related, I try to do whatever you guys will find helpful. So if you have any suggestions or feedback, feel free to leave that in the comment section below. If you want to have a little bit of a discussion, if you got some questions, you can leave it in the comments or you can go ahead and join my Discord. Uh, lots of friendly faces in there. You know, everybody wants to help out. So if you have any questions, you can post them in there. You can have a little bit more of an easier discussion than in the comments of YouTube. As always, I stream on Twitch from Friday until Tuesday. Come check me out and say hello. You're more than welcome to ask questions there as well. And I'll try my best to get to you as quickly as possible, as long as I'm not getting destroyed in whatever video game I'm playing. Thanks again for watching the end of the video. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you next Friday.